Bikinicast.com. Think, think about it. Bikini bottom. Whole new meaning now. Oh, <laughs> listen up, pineapple <laughs> under the sea. Pedro Square Pants. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, hauntos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week, Epic Challenge to Valve to a price match guarantee, but they're not mm, falling for it. They're just not, man. We're going to explain why, and NVIDIA has released a card that will make the perfect Christmas gift for your worst enemy. TIL, multiplayer benchmarking exists. Also, it might be getting some Linux support. And Frenchie and Tim, the sitting in a tree. F-U-N-D-I-N-G. Well done. <laughs> Kudos. GDC <laughs> happened, and uh, Valve had a bit of a sales pitch. And NVIDIA lets you RTX on Linux with the 10 and 16 series. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to this nightmare train. I'm Vince Stone. That is Jordan Sfang, and that is one Pedro man. Tayus, with you live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Fuck it, YouTube. I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we already got copyright strikes, right. so. They're just handing them out, man. Uh, bye, bye, money. Buy $14 from YouTube. I'm going to really miss that Subway sandwich. <laughs> oh, what's up, baby? You're getting ready to move. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the last show uh, I'm going to be doing in this apartment. I'll hopefully, hopefully the setup doesn't go too crazy in the new place, um, but there will be the very early version of like i guess the the fro studio mark ii the first studio still, all right fro studio from frodio this is, I, I this is like my first frodio near a far where view or montage of shelfie as we yeah. say goodbye yeah <laughs> don't you forget about me right don't don't oh, no, no 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 man the, no, not cheesy enough closing time <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, also, 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 I, I I did a bit of a PR yesterday. Uh, I did a 535 pound squat, and that was that was kind of yeah, cool. man. So, I say you put that in the Discord. I was like, good on you. Yeah, getting getting closer to 600. Squat hard, baby. What's up, Pedro? Yeah. Over here, well, uh, Nori's getting a new GPU on Monday, and it's not <laughs> going to be a 1650. Stick Aww. around for the why. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> and, uh, the um, fine folks at Intel have finally decided to acknowledge that, yes, that bug that I reported with the Portuguese uh, keyboard layout not working properly on clear Linux is, in fact, a bug. Good on that. So, yes. <laughs> I taught myself how to DaVinci Resolve Thursday morning. I was really proud. I want to try that out because we got the big fancy, like, baby thread ripper. And I started digging into KDN Live and the engine behind KDN Live, which is Melt, and got elbow deep in that documentation I'm like wait a minute this thing can only handle 16 threads nope up oh, all right fine so we're learning that and it kind of sold me when i put together like a proto lgc i was like how long is this going to take i hit the render button it's like how about eight minutes it's like, yeah i'm learning this so stay tuned for really fancy stuff with our crap sandwiched between the effects <laughs> B BSD shaky cam LGC. But man, the horse might get very interesting. I mean, the uh, definitely needs an upgrade. The horse is kind of boring this week. It just kind of smells. It's the steam. Yes. So GDC was a thing that happened, and um, well, the presentation that and the talk that valve gave along with the slides that they used are now available for your perusing uh the video is about 46 minutes long and it is a glorified sales pitch that's exactly what valve did uh, <laughs> uh they say that the redesign we mentioned the uh, steam library redesign beta that they're going to be doing at some point they do say it's going to be coming in the summer so i look forward to breaking it in all manner of ways and uh the, the rest of the presentation was a look at all the stuff that 30 percent cut gets you yeah we do all of these things for you <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. They're, 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 if, if, you, if you go through the slides, there's quite a bit of like, oh, yeah, no, we're actually listening to what you're saying, Herder. Um, <laughs> but the, the 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 other things that they are trying to do push in the uh, presentation was um, Steam announcements mm -hmm. uh, and uh, developer pages. 
So they're doing Valve's doing like a little mini Facebook thing where you can like follow your favorite developers and get spammed whenever they have new shit or tournaments or any other things they want to reach you with. Um, and hopefully their their plan is hopefully now that there is a direct avenue for customers to harass developers, they will no longer <laughs> review bomb things. No, um, that, why, why would you expect that to ever not happen? Uh, yeah. Listen, people in the internet, people on the internet always act in the best of faith. Uh huh. Yeah. Especially when they're looking for fair splits between, uh, I don't know, developer and store cuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing they're gonna worry about because Epic has straight up challenged Steam to a game of challenge pissing. That's right, man. <laughs> pretty uh, much. Pretty much, man. Epic Store will stop exclusives if Steam changes revenue split. Said one Tim. <laughs> no, they won't. Oh, man. Uh, in a series of tweets that started discussing Epic's 12% <laughs> revenue share, Sweetie repeated that he said um, his main goal 30% dominance. He's like, yo, man, check this out. If you guys take your cut down to like that 12%, we'll quit paying off and we'll paying off developers, which is one way to look at it, or, you know, incentivizing them to only use Epic Steam Store. And I personally, I genuinely want to see Valve call that bluff because it's a bluff. Because the thing is, man, you know, buying exclusivity on top of taking such a low cut, that's not sustainable. And Valve and the rest of everyone in the history of fucking ever knows that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm sure as expenses mount, because, you know, if you're going to if you're going to try and like actually make a Steam competitor, you're going to have to offer stuff like multiplayer matchmaking, cloud saves, shit like that. That that costs like time and effort and development shopping and cart. infrastructure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. And, you know, as, as, as expenses mount, we're probably going to see in the next couple of years. Yeah, we're going to have to increase our revenue stream, but at least we're we're good. We're, we're we're not giving taking thirty percent. We're not we're taking twenty nine percent. Yeah, but yeah, stuck at that, Valve. Well, that's a bold claim from a uh, Cotton Sweetie there because you you won't stop having exclusives. Uh, you'll stop paying for them, sure. But I'm pretty sure some indie developers are very much looking forward to the uh, you know the platform being barren and thus getting them more exposure without store. them having to actually do One anything. One thing I want to point out, though, I mean, Sweeney says stores could go back to just being nice places to buy stuff rather than game developer IRS. Now, I think it's fair to point out, which we pointed out, and we're not white knighting Steam, but Steam's a lot more than a game store. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> go back to the. Previous. Talk that Valve did at GDC. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I, I, I mean the the big one out of that is Steam Sock. It's like, hey, here's a big infrastructural issue that a lot of games have to face. We fixed it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Good news, everyone. We're getting a new benchmark. Oh uh, uh, shit! Yeah. Um. Ashes of the Singularity. Uh. You may have heard of it if you've ever like read a video card review. Because that's one of the benchmarks that mm -hmm. they use. Uh, so they, their developers put up a 2019 update on their Steam forums. Uh, they got a bunch of other stuff about multiplayer. Because apparently, like this isn't this isn't just a benchmarking thing. Like there's there's like a multiplayer game attached to it or something. I don't I don't I don't really understand what, what's what's happening there. But they say that now that GDC is over, um, and they're they're they're, they're ev they might eventually bite the bullet and put out a <laughs> Linux version if the drivers can get to an acceptable point. To well, which I say. They brought up Project Stadia in their work on that, didn't they? They did, yes. Yeah. Um, which is going, which is going to require them to do some investment into uh, Vulkan. And I mean, yeah, hope, hopefully by like supporting multiple platforms, that Vulkan implementation is going to get a lot more shored up because then you can't take crappy shortcuts. But mm. I, don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I would say like the state of Vulkan drivers, at least under Linux, is equal to or I would say probably better in terms of like feature comparison than oh, yeah. what's in Windows because. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hearing these guys complain about like the drivers not being good enough or not doing what they need them to do. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent on that, but you know, at the very least they're working, they're working with uh, AMD and NVIDIA to hopefully sort whatever these perceived issues are. Um, I'm guessing that, that some of that is very much pointed at AMD because yes, Red V is very good. It made a lot of progress in a very short time, but it's not all there yet. And having the mainstream benchmark that you see in every single GPU review ever pushing for a better driver is a good thing. 
but the end Pedro, result is pretty good. <laughs> but Pedro, here's here's the thing: because we live in a reality where promises are the exact same thing as concrete action. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is 100 percent confirming <laughs> that that um, <laughs> that this will be coming to Linux. No, d- ignore ignore that bit about biting the bullet and might doing it. Come on, come on, guys, show show us those mm-hmm. elfs and SOs, man. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't I don't believe you until you show me like a binary I can run under Linux. That genuinely 100 percent the only reason I want it because I've never I have no idea what the game is, but I think like a lot of you at home. We're like, Wait, yeah, there's a the game? benchmark. I think it has an interactive <laughs> mode for like one of the benchmark things, but I, I have no idea, zero ideas. Like, it, it oh, would... I guess that explains why they were talking about uh, area of effect and damage. And, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, I've played Talos Principle for two hours and I probably have 40 in it. <laughs> right. All right. We got a couple of new games this week. Yes, we do. And first up is Forager. It's a uh, very... Guy. Yes, <laughs> it's a uh, very cutesy, I said Minecraft, but Jordan pointed out it's a uh, cutesy don't starve. So yes, it, it, it actually is. Uh, and ah, yeah, there's got some... It's dying. It's dying. <laughs> Look at him. Look at that fucking oh, radish die. Oh, oh shit. So it sh- <laughs> it's got a big sword, Pedro. Have you already bought it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I haven't played it yet, but uh, oh, oh, it but, does look uh, like it's... Uh, you know, it, it's a thing. It's like Zelda, 15 man. pounds over here. And uh, they say, they describe it as the highly popular and quirky idle game that you want to actively keep playing. That just reads like a mobile game, but I don't know. Very positive reviews, I guess. It's got a lot of good buzz behind it. And I'm interested that we got a Linux port of it, but no Mac port. I'm like, huh, don't say that very often. <laughs> It's, it's, it's becoming, OpenGL it's become, 4.5. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I, I think that that has been being a lot a lot more common these days because, like, at, at least before Molten VK, it was a lot of effort to like port things over to Metal. If you're doing it through Vulkan or OpenGL, you know, at least those drivers exist on you know Windows and Linux. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, it's good yeah. to see it, and people are having fun with it. So maybe it's something we'll check out. Who knows? Perhaps. Uh, Let's Perhaps. go check out No Mao's Land. Yes, China, Mao's Legacy. So this is from a company called Kremlin Games, and uh, <laughs> they, they do they do a couple of these like communist-themed uh, alternate history, choose-your-own-adventure, uh, Crusader Kings type games. Um, but this is this is one where you take over just as like Mao Zedong is dying right after the cultural cultural revolution, and you get to like you get to sort of de- determine what the what the future of China will be from that point. Um, and it does like a bunch of uh, political simulation and strategy stuff. You got to make it out of the Cold War into the modern age. And it seems kind of interesting. Yeah, Ven, I agree with you 100%. Definitely not available in China. <laughs> <Really>? Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely not available in China at all. No, sir. Um, does... Um, like I said, it does kind of remind me a bit of um, like Crusader Kings. Looking through the screenshots and some of the gameplay videos, okay. minus some of like the goofiness that comes with Crusader Kings, like having to murder the Pope and like <laughs> impregnating people and then assassinating them immediately after they give birth and shit like that. Now I I did not know this. No, I want to play this more. Um, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Do you think Do you think you could like um, break apart the Chen Dynasty and like get all feudal with it? Probably not. Uh, I don't I don't know it's like some of some of it kind of looks like a bit of a choose your own adventure so it has like branching paths like that others sort of look like it's more of a simulation game so I don't know how flexible it actually is and what you can do you can probably like go old like war games and shit though right probably yeah pro- probably yeah. if you want to like it like it, it says like if you want to make China the superpower you can in mm. this so do you, you can launch your own 5g network something like that <laughs> and have it be stopped by a reasonably sized door or, or just like somebody in the minister like secrecy <laughs> like leaking stuff no, no, that's a story for a different time no, let's, no, let's no, no, a stream <laughs> pad um it's a sound pad app it's a soundboard and it's available for Linux. i just threw this in here i was like what because we, we don't mm-hmm. often get software on steam non-gaming software yeah in general much <laughs> less something on linux so, Pedro, what are your thoughts on this, man? I mean, this just looks like a soundboard, but... Yeah, it, it, that is how they describe it, and apparently... But it's they early do access, mention... so maybe it only kind of yeah. sounds a little bit, and it's like... 
Yeah, it just well, makes fart it, noises. Right. It, it's a good thing that it is in early access because if this was a finished product with some of the features that are missing, like, I don't know, uh, picking hotkeys that aren't just the default ones and you're stuck with them. Yeah, that seems to be the big one that uh, the one review that uh, someone left on it uh, was complaining about. And yeah, it's it's a soundboard, but a software. It's, I guess if you were running this on another computer, but at that point you might just get a dedicated soundboard. No, just, on, on, honestly, the, the this can be solved by like getting a like eighty dollar Amazon tablet and loading up a fucking soundboard app and plugging it into your mixer and that's... being responsible enough never to actually do that because that's right. all the show would turn into. <laughs> Uh, yeah, ex exactly. I think Vin and I have agreed on that. Pretty much. But I mean, it's it's three bucks, so. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean, if I don't you don't know. want to bother yeah. setting something up, and I mean, if it, I'm I want to know how it works. Uh, does the time with Pulse Audio or like try to run it through Proton? Then mm -hmm. no, I I I I genuinely think it's just a thing where you can like associate those buttons with sounds, and then if you press it, it plays yeah. the sound. Oh man, uh, I wanted to work with like Jack. See, yeah, see, that, 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 that would be... You could probably pipe it through, Jack. Oh, that, that, that would be, that would be interesting. Right. Or, yeah, or, like, stream the Pulse Audio Sync to somewhere else. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. This is all stuff that the application should do that it probably does not. No, sir. Um, it is early access, and it's, like, two pounds over here, so... Eh. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's three bucks. I'm not gonna be too harsh on it. Well, before we get out of here, we need to talk about Metal Slug. Not reloaded. Well, gun slugs. Uncaffeinated. Uh, it's, Diet. Yes. Lemon. <laughs> Lemon slug. Specifically, Dr. Gunslug. Gunslug's Rogue Tactics, which is, uh, if you played the first two Gunslugs, they were basically um, their equivalent versions of Metal Slug. Uh, this one introduces roguelike elements, or roguelite, because it is very light on the rogue elements. And, um, yeah, it's basically, the gameplay here has changed to be, you know, your traditional go in guns blazing, everything dies with Metal Slug, and you actually get to be a bit more tactical about it. And if you die, it's, yeah, you get the rogue thing and you start all over again. It's not a bad idea because it introduces some much needed variety because, yeah, we have Metal Slug already. We've played that. Some of us are even old enough to have played that in the arcades. So some, 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 of, some of us are old enough to have done that and then, like, bought the arcade cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because <laughs> they have jobs and, now. Yeah, introducing like roguelike elements to the to an established game genre, so to speak, is a pretty good way to get me interested. Because oh look, it's doing something different. Yes. <laughs> look, look, looking looking through this though, like they're pretty heavily cribbing off of Broforce. And I went to check, like, okay, is this the yeah. same development for Broforce? No, no. <laughs> they are they are they are straight up ripping these guys off. So it looked like, like the, Broforce like down to like, oh look, at our witty names for the characters that Yeah, are ex not exactly. Like, yeah. No, that this this is uh, this is I can't believe it's not Broforce. This, <laughs> show title. <laughs> um But it, it's it's lacking one thing that makes Broforce Fun. A guy screaming incoherently? Online multiplayer. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, coming up next. Man, we got we got a lot of NVIDIA news. So get 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 ready for the mean green get power right. 15 minutes. Mean green. We spent talking about it. Touring. Get ready for some news. There's going to be some of those going around. But before we get to that, Pedro let's Ball. take some time. Some of those news. And Pedro Ball. Yes. Pedro <laughs> I'll come in like a Pedro Ball, whatever. <laughs> need, need, needs, more, needs more pineapple. pineapple. If, you, yep. if you want to help us afford pineapples to mix with tuna and feed to Pedro, you can head off over to LinuxGamecast.com. Think about it. Think about it. Bikini bottom. Whole new meaning now. Oh, there's a pineapple <laughs> under the seat. Pedro Square Pants. Um, if yeah, if, if you if you want to see that, uh, go to linksgamecast.com. We got a brand new support menu. You can click on things to like very very. That that's a Bitcoin address, all right. Yeah, just click click on stuff. It'll take you to a place where you can give us money or buy stuff for yourself, Finance this and then nonsense. we will get money. Yeah, Pedro. Uh, well, it, yeah. Oh man, we got we got to see if uh, speaking of which we got to see if Teespring will start like selling custom like Wilson beach volleyballs oh, with Pedro's man. face Merch on it. Oh man, idea. Speaking yeah. of Yeah. 
yeah, store.linuxgamecast.com. Buy yourself some Hello <laughs> shirts, Frank file shirts, coffee mugs, mouse pads, hoodies. Cover your shame. Eventually, we're gonna get the booty shorts. I'm I'm gunning for the booty shorts. I, I, will... I mean, you, you can't cover your shame with shame, or can you? Double shame, you shame Double squared. complete shame. <laughs> Challenge and Pedro. Okay, and we're, if... we're getting a silhouette of Pedro on a ball. That's yeah. That's uh, yeah, Pineapples. and uh, yeah. Try explaining I mean... that at a conference, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh man, and 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 of, and of course, the most shameful display is heading on over to Patreon, becoming one of the awesome. 121 people giving us money every week to you know bring you five days a week Dude, of content, we get to including do cool this. shit. Like last night, we got together and we played Super Tux Card multiplayer. Then we opened it up to the public, and like everyone came in. Nice, yeah. Uh, we're. Do uh, Pedro does stuff on Tuesdays. I do stuff on Thursdays, and yeah, there's lot, lots, lots of fun yeah, crap. Un- and the- that's the yep. yes, it's beautiful. And the pre pre super chosen, the pre pre super chosen is really neat, man. If you're wondering, like, there's an extra hour of uh, we call our production meeting, and we get together an hour before the show. You can tune in live, hop in our Discord, and listen and participate. Where we just talk about what's going on here behind the scenes, and uh, you know, Game of Thrones is on. Yeah. But yep, we yep. have a new patron this week, so we get to put him in the credits. And uh, welcome, oh. Odon. Indeed. Oh, Odon. the other the, the other cool thing you get from being a Patreon is you get to show up in our Discord channel, and you can hang out with us the other rest of the time. Six days we'll, of the week. Yeah. It's, it's, well, the other two days that we're not streaming. It's yeah, terrifying. Like <laughs> we right, um, yeah. Santa Frank. Uh, Frank's... Santa, Santa Frank. Yeah, we got we got the fuck wall. Uh, we got we got one of those uh, Amazon wish lists uh, on that wish support zone. menu. If you want to wish zone, if you want to buy us shit that we can use in our day to day, you can uh, you can buy some stuff. If you send us a little letter along with it, we'll read it, and your name goes up on the fuck wall. You're supposed to leave that part out. No, no, <laughs> and you get to write anything you want. We have well, that Amazon will accept like camera anyway. equipment, video encoders, and cameras another thread and ripper. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tracking that price, baby. I want that thing to get down to like 300 bucks. Yeah. All right. Well, let, 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 let's get into it. Vulcan drivers. Yeah. So drivers, it's been a bit of a dry spell for drivers lately, but uh, here they are. Uh, and NVIDIA, the first one was the um, developer driver, the Vulcan developer driver that they put out every now and then. It comes with the latest Vulcan stuff. So if you want to play around with that, this is a driver you want to get. And this one, uh, it also lets you play around with the RTX bits on the 10 series and the 16 series, as well as the Titan V, if for some reason you had those $5,000 burning a hole in your wallet. Uh, So yeah, the Titan X, the XP, the GTX 1080 Ti, 1080, 1070 Ti, 1070, and 1060, as well as the 1660 Ti and the 1660, uh, all give you emulated rtx since they don't have dedicated tensor cores or ray tracing cores yeah. So, so yeah sucks to be you if you're you buying should a be 1650 grateful. you should be grateful pedro <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know what if, if 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 you're thinking maybe like i want i want to pick up a 1650 for a development machine do some vulcan development yeah you're shit out of luck you're not going to get any support here it's another reason why that card sucks but you know spoilers oh man um, uh, i want to speak on behalf of everybody in the history of fucking ever that happens to have an rtx card where the hell's that quick thing you showed off, Nvidia? I mean, the North remembers that. I, I want. I, I want to play. There was that. an article saying that they would release it. Oh, the, not listen. the when. There, there was an <laughs> article <laughs> from <laughs> Jensen himself at the end of that damn conference. He's like, and it'll be out uh, at the end of mm-hmm. April. Let's listen. They're teaming up with <laughs> George R. R. Martin. It's going to come out when the Winds of Winter comes out. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Right. Right. Uh, right. right. Drivers. All right. Okay, more drivers, and the second bit of drivers is the new short-lived version, which is, pardon me, uh, the 430.09, which uh, brings support for the GTX uh, 1650, along with a couple of fixes like HEVC YUV444 decode is now supported in VDPAU. There's actually a lot of VDPAU little fixes and improvements with this release. I wonder if... uh, Whoever that person was is like, oh, I guess I should do something about this. Okay. <laughs> hey, they even made a note. They're like, hey, man, it kind of works with OpenSUSE. 
ish. Right. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah. Ab- apparently, <laughs> N curses in OpenSUSE was causing a bit of a problem if you're using a SLES or SUSE leap. Um, the other thing they fixed in this is um, your resolution may have been wrong if you've been using the NVIDIA settings to set up uh, prime displays. Mm. And I'm glad they're fixing that because I will maintain that if you are using Bumblebee because you have an Optimus laptop, really consider switching to prime. It's a lot. It's less fucky. There's fewer components involved and it works very well. Nice um, to know. Um, indeed. One of the things I noticed, and um, maybe you caught it at home, this actually showed up in the um, NVIDIA drivers, the PPA, like the same century. <laughs> it was like a week. It was like, what? Huh? Okay. Good Good on you, Canonical. That's why I'm moving the door. Um, up next. <laughs> up next? Well, it's the big one, I guess. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The internet was... <laughs> Joyous with glee because uh, the struggling GTX 1650 is missing Turing's improved video encoder, to which I whispered internally, motherfuckers. Ah, this comes from PC Games in all this business. In our show notes, go check it out after the fact. NVIDIA's new GTX 650, uh, based on the fresh TU-117 GPU, has the NV encoder from othering Volta Edit because reasons and go to hell NVIDIA. Because with that, you nixed any desire for this underpowered graphics card, which could have been a fantastic, fantastic, low-cost NV encode Turing back solution for streamers. Period. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this 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 is not entirely unexpected. This is N- Nvidia likes to do this shit where they wanna they wanna actually move you to buy like the more expensive model for whatever fucking reason, whether it's because you're running pass through in virtualized environments or whatever, but. Nvidia, Jen- Jensen, come on! You could have sold a shit ton of fucking units here. Like, oh man, mm-hmm. they'd be flying off the shelves if they had that encoder in there. That 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 was like the only reason anyone was actually interested in it. This is like the polar yeah. polar thing with this card because without that, there is no reason to buy this card. Oh no! All. And None. if you saw the reviews, it's like, oh, Nvidia released a brand new card that makes. An AMD card from two years ago look pretty damn good by comparison, especially when you take the prices. Admittedly, it's very hard to find an RX 570 brand new at MSRP. (laughs) Good luck. But yeah, if you can find one, one of the four gigabyte versions, that there's no debate. It's the 570 is so much better. And they were kind of dicks about it because they didn't release a the drivers to reviewers until yeah. like the same day with all that. And I genuinely feel bad for, cause you know, of course there's no founders edition for this, but like the AI, AIB partners that have to make these contractually, they're like, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one want, but the one savior is, I guess, is it can be run on 75 Watts. But yeah. Like that, 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 that's, that's really the main buy you get over like the 570 at this point. Can we just expect PCI like power. Dell to start shipping these in volume or something like that? Maybe. Uh, no, the, no, those optiplexes are going to be, um, IGPs till the end of days. <laughs> oh, come on. They can slap one of that in there and like spray paint it with some RGB. <laughs> Man, I, I listen. I, 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 I want to do some whippets off some like aerosolized RGB. Man, that would be great. Whippets, maybe. <laughs> You'd fucking trip some balls. <laughs> All right. <laughs> speaking, speaking of just speaking of tripping balls. GDP Win Max to be powered by an AMD Ryzen embedded SOC instead of an Intel CPU or GPU. Look at it. It looks kind of neat. I want one just to put Linux on it. But I know it's going to be way too expensive for me anyway. Um, yeah. It's also literally going to burn a hole in your pocket. Dude, still a better love story than the Smash Z. Right. Oh, I, <laughs> did, 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 you, did you read this? Um, they're, they're in, in, the, in this article, they're like, oh yeah, interestingly, the Smash Zero, this thing's main competitor, is going to be using an MDM. It's like, you're talking about this like the Smash is actually a thing. Like people will buy it. And it will be a viable product. <laughs> it's got the Ryzen Man. embedded uh, V165B. So that's four core, eight thread, 3.6 gigajoules, base frequency, two gigajoules, 12 to 25 watt TDP. So, I mean, keep your power cord around, but... Mm, uh, I mean, 12 to 25, that's laptop territory? <laughs> it is, but that's not a laptop battery, sweetheart. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's a cell phone battery. <laughs> <laughs> that's a smaller battery than my nexus 10 tablet i'm all i'm yeah. saying is keep some extra double a's lying around because you're gonna have to game gear this fucker dude games are not <laughs> i would like to have a portable 
x86 reasonably powered system like this yeah yeah just yeah, yeah. compared to the gpd pockets because i do want a pocket but that's because it's just the teeny tiny thing that's vaguely laptop shape and that tickles that side of my brain um vaguely but, yeah. laptop shape well you collect strays yeah you do what are you talking about Get i only have 14 of them hoarding on a budget <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mean like I I've I've seen I've seen I've seen the inside of Jill's room and I'm pretty sure like eventually over like I'm gonna give it like maybe three, four years time before Pedro gets to about that level of just like laptops lying around. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be great. <laughs> We're gonna visit him. Admittedly, um... I've given like seven of them away. It's just that they keep showing up on eBay. It's like, ooh, that looks neat. Give me. <laughs> yeah, know? it's because you can I, 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 I wonder, TL, man, which is the Nori toleration <laughs> level. One, like, yes. like I, I, I wonder how much in like actual money you could have saved if like every time you do that, you're like, you know what? I'm going to invest this. I'm going to invest this money in like some stocks. I mean, at are, are they at least housebroken? Yes. All right. They're, they're no, all no. very nice and they all know to poop in the uh, little basket that's underneath the. Uh, yeah, shelf. no, no. My, 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 my <laughs> laptops keep peeing all over my hardwood floors. It's really annoying. You're going to get Intel plasma. Gandhi. <laughs> okay. Oh, Epic stories about Lutris. Yes. So, um, our, our, our good pal, our friend, our. That, that guy whose couch I slept on, uh, Matthew Commandol. He, uh, he put out a little tweet. Uh, he says, good news, Epic Games. Now I've, I've got your store running under wine under Lutris, so it can install the store and some of the games. Mind you, a bunch of the games in that aforementioned store don't exactly run yet under wine. So really, really what this means is you can um, you can install the Epic Store under Linux. And if any if there are games on the Epic Store that will work under like that wine prefix, then they will. Otherwise... You're kind of shit out of luck. Um, there, there's also a bit of a conversation going on earlier <laughs> in the week in our Discord. Where, uh, where this is why you got to come check out our Discord because what, what, yeah. one of Strider's favorite hobbies is talking shit about Epic. And <laughs> we, so uh, he tweeted him back, and he's like, "Yo, man, why don't you go for a grad short circuit to the boy?" You know oh yeah. Doing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, to 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 be, to be fair on Sweeney's part, it's probably still cheaper just like cutting him a check for fifty grand than oh. like actually supporting Linux. It was so, glorious! Oh, yeah. It was the dog chasing the car and catching the fucking car. He's like, "What the fuck do I do now? I don't know." Right? <laughs> I don't know, man. It sounds like a problem for Disney to sort out. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, old man Strider. Uh, you have you're in a world of fun now, uh, and if I wasn't. <laughs> If I were in your shoe, Strider, right now, I'd take the grant. It's well, like you better to take for money from those people One than thing. to, you know, not have money. One <laughs> bit of credit I'll give to them. Sweet. I fucking DM'd with a dude, like, at link. Yeah. Like, for no fucking reason to. <laughs> All right. Good communication. Windows 95. Yeah, uh, I, I I remember getting high and watching the Windows 95 screensaver to you guys back back when weed was a lot weaker than it was today. What, um, Tuesday? Uh, right. <laughs> um, and anyways, this is Maze 95. This is a project uh, where the guy wanted to make like a playable version of the um, of like the screensaver from Windows 95 because it was a giant maze. It was amazing. Uh, you can you can be the screensaver. And re really, he, sa he says it right on his GitLab page. He's like, I just want to learn about software rendering. And this seemed like a cool way of going about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you can you can you can build it. You can walk around a maze. There'll be some pictures and shit. And yep. you can and you can builds. you can stuff a and you can stuff a cucumber <laughs> down your pants and pretend you're David Bowie in Labyrinth. You you can hang cucumbers on the wall and pretend you're in the Matrix. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you you don't you don't need a special occasion for that though. No, not really. <laughs> or drop some peas down a sheet of metal. Uh, but no, it it it, it does build. Uh, and the um, there's a, even an AI mode that you can just hit it and watch the AI it play itself. and. Yeah, <laughs> it does the uh, it does like the screensaver thing that the original did. It, yeah. <laughs> One thing I remember, I remember seeing that on like work PCs, that and the planet. I distinctly remember like the rotating orbital like Saturn or something like make that mm -hmm. a game. It'll be fun. Call it Ashes. Uh, Johnny Castaway. A mm. Ash ashes of the Spingularity. Planet Earth. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, look, look, look what I found. 
God damn it. A game how about a warning? A little bit of warning, <laughs> Brad. It's, 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 it's one of these things. Yours is in better my... shape than mine. Mine is like... Uh, I mean... Yeah. Okay, never mind. I take that back. <laughs> 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 Yours is in good shape, you were saying. <laughs> Mine rattles yeah. when you move it, though. The internals are dislodged. Isn't that right, Jordan? Do you see what you did, buddy? You broke the internet. Oh, man. So <laughs> it, it was too advanced, man. The Canadian internet couldn't handle gaming yeah, technology. Yeah, no, it couldn't handle it. <laughs> GB Studio, a free and easy-to-use retro adventure game creator for your favorite handheld video game system is totally a thing and it's kind of brilliant and the reason i wanted to bring it up because this actually creates real rom files pedro like yeah this, and this, this a... is not going to spit out like a two gig unity project <laughs> no. right? <laughs> or a game maker studio that looks like it was made in 1993 but takes like three gigs of your hard drive uh no and this one not only will it create roms but if you're good enough and you have one of those uh flash cartridges you can plug that into your game boy with a nasty card or something else with the rom that you created on there and it will work so now you two can go and create your pokemon uh ripoffs easily because it's all well, drag and drop um, well re really really you can you can make <laughs> dragon quest or like stuff like final fantasy adventure that's really about it although the 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 sprites in here kind of look like uh legend of zelda at least from what's what's going on in here uh, sort of gives me a bit of a Link's Awakening vibe, um, but yeah, no, this this was this is a really cool project. Uh, just because just because like you can actually run these games on like an OG Game Boy, I went and dug mine out as specifically as a prop for this. Nice. Um, <laughs> it was at the bottom of a box too. I'm gonna have to reorganize that box. <laughs> <laughs> Dedication, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's, it's called committing to the bit. Um, okay, before we get out of here, uh, we do have a quick interview from Scale that we're finally getting around to posting, where Jill talks to Alan Pope from Canonical and Machu Comandon from the aforementioned Lutris Gaming. Take it away. Hello, everyone, again from these, these, the floor of Scale 17X. And we ran into Popey, none other nice. than Alan Pope. And he's one of our esteemed Chat Realm members as well <laughs> of Linux Gamecast. And as everyone knows, a lot of people know that he's doing a snap of Lutris. So for Lutris, so that, that'll be awesome. And, and can you tell us a little bit more about that and some of your upcoming snaps? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I saw a lot of requests for Lutris and everyone knows how wonderful Lutris is. And uh, so I thought I'd take a look at snapping the thing. And the, the reason I wanted to snap it is because the, the benefit of snapping something is it gets into lots of people's hands very fast. And with something that's fast moving like Lutris, where the developer is super active, you want the developer to be able to push their updates to the store and get it in the hands of users quickly, yeah. especially when there's updates to support new games or new game technologies or new driver technologies or whatever. So. That's really why I wanted to get Lutris snapped and get it in the store. Um, it's been quite challenging because it does things that other applications don't, like not every snap is the same. Some are really easy to snap, other things are a little bit more challenging. And Lutris is somewhat challenging. So um, yeah, I'm working on that. I'll be working on it this weekend and we'll hand it over. I'll do a pull request oh, yeah, to upstream no, no, and we'll work on it together. That's the goal, that's the goal. Uh, thank you for all your work and no you know, we're. Matthew is so honored. The, the worst He's so honored. So far as a horse Matthew. Yes. Yes. Ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about how great it would be if Lutris was a snap in the store. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to make this a thing as soon as uh, the next version is released. And hopefully we get something running uh, quite soon. You got something running. Uh, if it's not like the whole confined snap, that's not a big deal. I mean, like um, the way Lutris works, it's in, it takes care of uh, things that are installed on the system, like other programs. So that's not something that Snap usually does. So if we get the unconfined version first, I mean, that wouldn't be a problem. Um, after, I mean, we can like think about other evolutions, uh, make uh, the Lutris snaps, uh, install snaps themselves, like snap games as snaps, or games as uh, flat packs, for example. Um, I mean, this is something that people ask a lot for, and we're 
see a lot about this like in the near future. So we'll see uh, how it goes. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Ubuntu. And then the question can be asked. Was it fun? Did you have a good time? Anyways, we're taking a look at Super Tux Cart 1.0. This is the second time that uh, the Super Tux Cart has faced the Chairquisition. You can get it at supertuxcart.net, not Steam, because, you know, fuck putting open source games on Steam. Am I right, you guys? It's developed <laughs> by the Super Tux Cart community. Surprise, surprise. It's done on a custom engine, partially Erlecht or Antarctica. It is cheap as free because you can just download the source code and compile it with no warranty. And yeah, I don't think we have to do mandatory disclosure. The no, no, no one from Super Tux Cart no, asked man, us to do that listen, for I'm, good reason. You were paid off by Big Cart. <laughs> I was yeah, I, I, I was I was I was paid off by Big Gnu, and mm. I, I got all the foot fungus I can eat from Richard Stallman. Anyways, uh, let's let, let, let's get into it. Ben, how, how, how did this shit work? Oh, check it out, bitches! Look at that shot I didn't fix. Uh, over here on 1804, I'm back on the uh, LTS juice, man. It worked fine on the Ryzen. Wait, damn it, Threadripper 1920x, yeah. 32 gigajoules of RAM, all that fun stuff with the 2060. Everything worked out of the box. I didn't have any like serious issues with that. But uh, this is not a complaint. I don't want this to sound like a complaint, even though it's kind of a complaint. Is it can't spawn a pulse sync when you have the Jack Audio server running. I knew no one except me is going to run into that. That was a little little irritating. Not enough to ding it a chair. But I'm just saying, look into it. Uh, that might be a thing. With the graphics, hey man, I mean, it looks good. I mean, compared to like 2007, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. um, interesting visual lighting effects and stuff like that. Not lazily done at all for an open source game. Uh, definitely one of the better looking ones. Um, controls, out of the box, I used Happy Fun X Clone Wireless Controller, which Everything was remappable. I was happy. I was like, oh man, this is easy mode. And I mapped everything correctly. However, when this thing times out, get fucked because you got to restart Super Tux Card in order to uh, have it connected. So I'd suggest uh, keep a wired controller around. But uh, yeah, give it a solid three for launching performance and graphics. But you're going to get dinged for those controls and doing that. Oh yeah, I, I think I think Steam input has kind of spoiled us when it comes to like, oh, I forgot to turn the controller on. Now I don't have to restart the entire game. Uh, but anyways, on Fedora 29, 64 bit on the um, Ryzen R7 2700U with the Vega 11, um, it ran it ran out of the box. I used the precompiled version on the laptop. Um, cranking everything up to 11 on the APU gets you about 30 frames a second on uh, 1080. Um, that that is that is what it is. It's a laptop part and it's being throttled by by us. Um, on the, on the 1080 Ti though, this thing laughs at your puny carts. It's, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no match. It's got that 10 gigajoules of RAM. Go fuck yourself. Um, graphics. Yeah. I mean, it looks like super tux card. Like Ben said, they did a lot of effort with like the lighting, but it still, it still looks like super tux card, right? It's, it's that creative commons art. It is what it is. Can't really ding it for that. And controls. Yeah. Everything worked out of the box. It was very, very nice. Uh, I will give it four cheers. Yeah. And over here on, in Solus Land, I built it from Sauce because the repo doesn't have the um, the 1.0 version yet. It's still on 9.3. And it, the only thing I needed to install was uh, lib OpenGL recorder devel. That, that was the only package that I did not already have to build this game from Sauce. So yeah. That was nice. Uh, performance, if you push it all the way up on the Intel IGPs that I have uh, laying about, it gets you about 20 FERPs-ish. Uh, but that, over did, here- uh, Yeah, with your 1080. Yeah, with the 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it caps out at 111. That's, that's what it can do. It doesn't go any higher. It doesn't go any lower. It's always at 111, so, okay. <laughs> Uh, graphics. If you want to see, like, the really nice effects that they got on those screenshots in their website, uh, you will need, uh, to enable the motion blur thing, mm -hmm. which it actually doesn't look terrible as you're driving around, but if you're trying to, say, record a video, 
You really want to turn that off because it doesn't look good after you've recorded it. Uh, the controls, uh, the keyboard works, the DualShock 4 works, everything is uh, rebindable, so as far as I'm concerned, it gets a clean bill of health. Four chairs. All right, well, there you go. Don't play Super Tux card if you're using Jack Audio. That's the moral of the story. I'm actually more impressed that Pedro is so dedicated to his forever alone mode. He didn't even play with bots. No, that's the time trial one. Yeah, that's what I said. You yeah. didn't play with bots. You picked the one where you could play all with yourself. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, listen, Pe Pedro loves playing with himself. Tell Anywho, um, yeah. I mean, almost everything from the... Um, okay. Wait, no, actually, no, it's your okay, turn. You're so fun. I, I was giving it a shot, man. I thought you were going to give yeah. it a shot. It didn't. <laughs> womp, womp. I didn't. Yep. This is the critical part. This is the important part, man. It's what you're wondering about. Um, is it fun? Because I've been playing this game for roughly 11 years, and I've enjoyed it, I'd say maybe for the last eight months. Because let's face it, the single player, this forever alone thing, it's kind of boring. And whatever drugs you lot were on when brainstorming the story mode for this game, I want some. <laughs> I do, because I don't know. That I, intro cutscene, man. <laughs> I have not figured that fever dream out yet. So, but still, good on you. I mean, it's a kart racer at the end of the day with a gang of tracks, players to fill them. A uh, couple of modes. You got football or soccer, demo derby. Uh, if you're not into the going around in circles bit, we played a bit of that last night. Uh, if you're playing with friends, prepare to have a good time. That's what I can say for this. And I'm really proud to be able to say that about a completely open source floss game that I absolutely recommend in any party situation. But like I said earlier, single player can be a bit of a slog, followed by a rage quit after the AI goes into like hella dick mode at the end on the last lap, because they do. Let's not pretend they don't. Hashtag hockey stick for the difficulty curve on that. But it's free, it looks good. And it's more entertaining than a lot of paid racing games available currently. Give you a solid three chairs. It means you did a good job. Yeah. Uh, almost everything from the last Super Tux Kart review we did applies pretty much in this one. Except now you can play online. With friends. And, that's, and honestly, that's like really a saving grace. Because otherwise, you have yourself a competently done kart racer that's free and open source. That... Yeah, you can't really play with anyone. But once you once uh, they added the online functionality, and it worked very very well. That that was the other thing that I was very impressed with was like, this has been a demanded feature, and they could have really fucked it up, and they didn't. Dude, so I mean, good it, on it you. It worked really well with um, Michael from Australia and uh, John in Tanzania last night. Yeah, ex exactly. They did they did a really good job with uh, the online multiplayer. And it shows. Um, and yeah, like I said, uh, or like was said many times, being able to friends play with your friends is the true saving grace of this game. You will have fun because it's this sort of game is fun when you have people to shit talk and run into and like shoot blue shells at them just before they hit the finish line. Otherwise, yeah, you're playing with the cheating bots and that's just kind of boring. Um, there, there, there are a lot of various modes and I can appreciate them throwing some Rocket League in there for the variety, but goddamn, those two are not the same game. Ah, <laughs> hurts my brain even more than regular ass Rocket League does, and that hurts my brain quite a bit. I'll give it three cheers. Yeah, honestly, this has turned out to be a very nice party game. The single player... It's a bit meh, and the AI cheats like a motherfucker. Uh, they rubber bend to you like crazy, so you can never get too far ahead of them. You're not going to be lapping anyone. Uh, on Expert, it's almost impossible to stay in first place for more than a couple of seconds, uh, because the moment you do get into first place, you'll be hit by three cupcakes, a basketball, and a couple of uh, those uh, plungers just for good measure. Motherfucker, uh, that's party. prom night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a great time. Uh, the physics on the driving itself, it's still a bit stilted, but at least the camera doesn't snap to the back of your cart the whole time, which gives you that l really jolty animation. I want to give you props turning. for making that jump twice in a row, even though you're in forever alone mode. That's a difficult little hold it yeah <laughs> i actually do it three times in a row but uh yeah uh the for the life of me in the standard maps i just i can't do the drifting i i realize what you need to do but i can't do it and all the turns are way too short and it's just not <sighs> i don't get it to, but, tune in uh, to what we did friday night watch me drift and watch everyone get wrecked <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Fast, uh, fast and the Furious have... Tokyo Dicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, Jordan mentioned, it does have the Rocket Carts mode, uh, which is not like Rocket Cars at all, but it does do a very good job of introducing some variety, some much-needed variety, and it's, it's amazing. It's like... It, all of this is open source. You could just download it and get it. That's, yeah. Uh, and, you know, without the cheating AI, playing <laughs> with your friends is actually pretty fun. They still need to do something about the name tags, because I saw the stream from yesterday. It's like, oh, yeah, the name tags are still there. Yeah, those need to be smaller. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, though, it gets three chairs. Oh, well, right. there you go. Super hey, Tux card. Well, it's a fun something. old time. It, I think it's a fun time. I don't think the AI cheats. I think the AI is a dick. <laughs> to the point to where it's easy to have the perception that it is extremely cheap and a dick. Like, right at the end. Um, oh, I, I, I've noticed on, like, some of the lower difficulties with the with the, with the bot AI, like, these guys, like, will make beelines into walls so you can go past them. The, so. uh, with the name thing, because when you're playing a multiplayer, that wasn't a problem. There were... Uh, well, all right, to explain this, there were four, and four of us playing, and we were just going through two laps and never thought about it. Then we opened the game up last night to the public, and it's, boom, then it was eight. Then mm -hmm. go back and watch the, the immediately in the first corner, everyone just slams and is like, fuck, I can't see. You just had a wall of yellow in front of you. <laughs> and yeah, the, that, that teeny tiny little bit smaller. If just somebody a wants a hobby project, ball cam. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Wait, what? Wait, what? I just tuned in. Ball cam? Ball cam, baby. <laughs> it's like the Love Shack, but with ball cams. The ball the cam desk. is yes. a little old cam where you can see your sagging. Uh, Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 we're done. Coming up next, some hate mail, then, then we're out of here. Bye, folks. All right, kids, it's time to feed the tapeworm, so we're going to wrap this up and let you go about, you know, your life. This, this is the part of my editing it. tomorrow I, I, where I start <laughs> playing around with vocal effects. Right, like, yes. see, I thought you were going to take that in a very different direction after wrap this up, but <laughs> talking about tapeworms. Drop the beat. <laughs> but, no. Chances are that alone gave you enough fuel for you to write a very lengthy rant on our contact form, and you can. You just go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, you fill out the form, make sure you pick uh, LGC Weekly from the little choosy box. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, um, that's all you need to do. We will be happy to feature your hate mail right here, right now. Or you can be like Orn and um, cry to War Jordan about how people peace, are. Man. <laughs> Orn and fucking peace. Yeah. So Orn had a lot of things to say about the no immunity thing. I think the reason they stated GNOME desktop environment, uh, mostly because of the officially supported distributions, Ubuntu 16.04, yeah, yeah, I know it's on Unity. Uh, 18.04, CentOS 7 has GNOME as their default, DE, but yeah, I agree with Jordan. The DE war is never ending hoopla. Shut up me. Also, Linda, if you want to stick with some LTS stabilityness, but with some regularly updated DE goodies, you could go with KDE Neon. The current Plasma is on 5.15, Kubuntu backports for Bionic is still on 5.12.7. Also, Cameron, I, VS I, I Code... I think he typed stability This is... Hey? <laughs> Pretend you're having a stroke. Oh, yeah. Stabilities. 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 Listen, if, if you or a loved one is stu suffering from stabilities, please can consult you, you the You've got to work on this word. There's a hyphen in that word. I mean, yes. you got to. <laughs> Maybe even and, uh, the final bit is actually a bit more aimed at LWDW, which is also Cameron. VS Code is just Adam with some bits taken off and some MS stuff bolted on. It's not awesome. It's okay at best. And Pedro, VS Code is not Visual Studio. Stop conflating festering heap of garbage with a less lesser heap of garbage. Jeebus, Christos, Cameron. Someone end me, please. Orn. It's Visual Studio. Studio, co it's in the name, but it's not Visual Studio proper, Pedro. Well, actually, it's still Pedro. Microsoft's ID bullshit. It still <laughs> ships in a Chromium fucking runtime. So, right? Um, 
That's a lot to pack in, Orin. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, why does he always say in me, please? Because he wants to die, and apparently staying in Bangladesh wasn't fast enough. No, no, I, I think yeah, his see, that would be it's, a pretty good way to do it. <laughs> it's pretty please in me. That's when you want to have put a pretty please inside yourself. See, I've never been um, to the point that I considered the proper etiquette of asking someone to end me. <laughs> See, I, I, I like how Dead from Mayhem did it, where he like left us. He left a suicide note apologizing, apologizing for the mess that he made after blowing his brains out with a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm that bummed. <laughs> Let's get to the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern. It, it, it goes off with a bang at 9.30. Come check it out. Uh, join us live. Thanks everyone who showed up. Uh, if you want to scream at me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter or uh, at Vin Stone on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Swung. I would say you could call me the Euronymous of Linux just Gamecast, call you but then... Urine. But You're then, like, Canada. Pedro might try to stab me. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, you, 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 can, you can find me making crappy black metal jokes on Twitter at The Burning Fool or on Mastodon, uh, mastodonlinuxgamecast.com. I'm at Frodo. And I am Pedro Mateos, and I still think Ozzy was the best frontman. Sue me. <laughs> so you can find me on Twitter at unaccounted4 if you'd like to argue that uh, Dio was the better one. No. Ian Holm was better, you motherfucker. <laughs> you don't even know who that is, so shut the fuck up. No, I don't. <laughs> now who's well, actually? <laughs> Listen, I'm Brett. Captain Well, actually. <laughs> ah, space drugs. Just say I no. I can go for some space drugs right about right now. now. Space <laughs> drugs, give me some space Dude. drugs. <laughs> Space Drugs, Coast to Coast. New show on LGC. <laughs> it's the thing that I like most. <laughs> yeah, apparently in the official Space Ghost comic, um, the Space Ghost Coast to Coast was canon, but that was because he was brainwashed into thinking that he was a talk show host. Nice. <laughs> that was like 30 episodes of that. That's that's a lot of canon. There's more than 30 episodes of Space Ghost Coast oh, to Coast. All the fuck. That shit ran for like eight seasons. Eight oh, nice. Seasons. Okay, I need to watch some more of that. <laughs> Fun show, everyone. Season 10 seasons. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Nin 92 episodes. I would have bet for like six, but damn. <laughs> We did it, Twitch Tube. We survived. We're technically still here. Technically. That's a very big technicality, too. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're the podcast that relies on technicalities. We win You're by default. You're a technicality. <laughs> I am. And that makes me the best kind of correct, because I'm technically correct. I'm technically insane, so... Eh. <laughs> 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 I'm actually insane, so <laughs> die in a fire. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Toodles. Five dudes.